So we'll skip these, uh, the first slide. Um, LV dilatation is a prerequisite and tethering length or the degree of displacement of the posterior papillary muscle is a determinant. This is a diagram of the typical shape of such an uh, ischemic or in general functional mitral regurgitation where you see the extra seeming extra pull on the cords which creates the seagull sign in the anterior mitral leaflet which is a hallmark of functional MR. Um, it has been argued that in order to restore normal mitral valve uh, form and function all you need to do is cut these uh, secondary cords. But keep in mind, the true reason why the valve leaks is displacement of the papillary muscle. On echo, it normally looks like this. If the echo was running, a displaced mitral leaflet, and you see this bend in uh, systole. Try again, Sam. No. Nope. It was working upstairs. What has been the traditional solution and which is uh, still used by the vast majority of surgeons? The bowling solution. So in a small ring and uh, hope for the best. In the operating room, the results usually look good. However, postoperatively, the picture may be different. This study here uh, from uh, France shows a roughly 30 to 40 percent recurrence rate of relevant mitral regurgitation within the first four to eight weeks after surgery. The functional, the prognostic result is no measurable effect on survival of the patient and our cardiology colleagues are unhappy. They say it does not contribute to the patient's well-being. Even a more recent, well-published study in the New England Journal of Medicine, well-designed, prospective, randomized, and everything, used the same approach. They could not show an advantage of repair over replacement. However, the interesting observation was in similar, uh, similar to what I showed you in the, in the French publication, a relevant recurrence risk for mitral regurgitation. What are the predictors of recurrence? Tethering of the anterior mitral leaflet. That is the ventricular component which had not been corrected. And this was also a predictor of failure in the Bolling series. So in other terms, with this disease, we have a, an annular problem and a ventricular problem. And if the ventricular problem is not addressed, mitral regurgitation will recur. Are there alternatives? And I'll keep this short. The edge to edge in modern days mitral clip has been proposed. The Cleveland Clinic found it does not work. So I am skeptical whether the current enthusiasm of our cardiology colleagues for mitral clip and functional MR will really be justified long term. Should a specific ring be used to control the problem? Some of the arguments about the different types of rings remind me of arguments between the different religions. Very difficult to come up with hard and rational arguments. When I started digging a little more into the background of the disease, one of my colleagues was working with Craig Miller in Stanford, and they did a very elegant study where they showed the geometric changes that occurred with the development of ischemic mitral regurgitation in a sheep model. In red, you see the displacement vectors compared to normal. So there was a lateral, an outward um, vector, displacement vector of the annulus. But the most important really was this lateral and apical displacement vector for the posterior papillary muscle. When I saw the results, I thought from a geometric point of view, the solution should be very easy. If there is a displacement vector, away from the central fibrous body of the heart. All we need to do is neutralize that displacement vector by adding a suture. 
So while my resident was continuing his work in the laboratory on sheep, I thought we do caudal replacement every day in the operating room. Let's simply place the caudal replacement a bit different. We looked for ischemic MR patients. We intentionally looked for a tenting height of 10 millimeters, which is considered both for mitra clip and annuloplasty as a hard cutoff where repair does not really make sense. In these patients, we would apply such a suture, which would be a Teflon plagiated uh, CV, CV3 or CV4 placed in the head of the posterior papillary muscle through the aorta, brought out through the aortomitral continuity, and then tied under echo control. And I hope this video now works. Cannot play media. So I have to, I apologize and have to describe it in detail. The operation of, consists of first suturing in an annuloplasty device. And actually in the first 70 to 80 patients, we used a band rather than a complete ring in order to do that. The atrium is closed, the aorta is opened, and it's then very easy to visualize the posterior papillary muscle. You see the anterior mitral leaflet, you put in a retractor, you pull on the anterior mitral leaflet, and the head of the posterior papillary muscle comes into view. You just place a suture, Teflon pledget, untied, bring it out through the aortomitral continuity, that is the anterior mitral annulus just below the commissure between left and non-coronary cusps. We did these, we started these operations. I was happy with the functional results. However, I decided that we need to look for a control group. We thus went into our own historic experience where we had simply used a band plus minus coronary surgery. And for we did a matched pair analysis. We came out with uh, 30 patients who had ring or band implantation plus relocation of the posterior papillary muscle and matched 30 patients that had a band only. The patients were comparable. Um, it was a reasonable cross-clamp time, but keep in mind um, the patients also needed some coronary bypass surgery there were some redo operations, um, and uh, ejection fraction was reduced in all. Operative mortality was in the range of 10%, which is not very low. On the other hand, considering ischemic mitral regurgitation, a mean ejection fraction in the range of 35%, plus coronary surgery, including redo operations, and some patients with going to the operating room with a balloon, this was not too bad. Survival of the string patients compared to the historic controls, sorry. We did not see a significant difference. However, there was an apparent trend that, that survival was improved using the string. Freedom from relevant mitral regurgitation, that is more than grade two, was significantly better using the string compared to the historic control. A note, the recurrence rate with band insertion only was similar to what had been published before. Interestingly, in the string group, we saw reverse left ventricular remodeling. Whether this was due to the fact that we had effectively eliminated mitral regurgitation or whether the string was the equivalent of an internal splint of the dilated left ventricle, we have not yet been able to clarify. After the first 70-some patients, I decided, okay, let's see whether we can now improve the system further. In these first patients, we had intentionally taken a band as the weakest support of annular dilatation. So the next patients um, underwent the same operation, simply taking a semi-rigid, full, complete ring, the physio ring. You can see here, um, and this is a short comparison, similar ejection fraction, pulmonary hypertension, proportion of atrial fibrillation, and so forth, comparable patient group. 
in survival, you can see we now have longer follow-up. Some patients did die uh, indeed. Survival was not significantly different. Freedom from reoperation as one of the hard endpoints was excellent in both groups. We have since extended the concept to dilative cardiomyopathy, again based on animal data where dislocation of both papillary muscles occurs in dilative cardiomyopathy, we use two strings, again, placed through the aorta and tied under echo control in order to really have a normal mitral valve form. Survival at uh, five years, 70% for these patients with a mean ejection fraction in the range of 30% has been reasonable and f so has been freedom from reoperation which has been 95% at five years. Most importantly, the predictor, the negative predictor for mitral valve stability that has been published by the Leiden Group, that is an LVEDD of 65 millimeters or more, was not a predictor for mitral valve stability. Let me summarize. The mechanism of functional mitral regurgitation, and here are similarities between IMR and DCM-associated mitral regurgitation, involves displacement of the papillary muscle and thus a ventricular disease on top of annular dilatation. If we want to achieve a stable repair result, the repair must address the ventricular component whenever it is present, and the tenting height is a good indicator of that. Undersized annuloplasty alone is simply inadequate in the majority of, in a relevant proportion of patients. Annuloplasty plus string plus papillary muscle repositioning is my way of treating that disease, and it leads to stable results in both forms of uh, functional mitral regurgitation. Whether a complete ring can improve the results further still has to be shown. Thank you for your attention.